Have you ever felt like you've been in one of these two categories? Number one, you've always wanted to code, have been trying out, but never been able to reach Nirvana. In fact, every time you try, you've done it in spurts and then eventually left it. Or you feel like you know a decent bunch. You've been coding for a while. You feel like you have the best stack under your belt, yet you're not able to find projects. If you're in one of these two categories, this video is for you. The goal is to understand how to grow as a software developer. How does the top 1% differentiate themselves? What are the things that they're doing right? And you can inculcate in your own workflow. Small disclaimer, few of these points are highly controversial. Please pick and choose what you think is relevant for you. And go from there. With that, let's get right into it. Number one, maintaining a reading list. In today's extremely distracted world, there might be a bunch of tech blogs or some new tutorial or some software that you feel like is interesting, some open source project for that matter, but you don't have the time for it yet. Don't forget it, just shove it in a stash. I've been maintaining a list of things to read since 2019. Whenever I find something interesting, I put it there. Whenever I read it, I pop it off. The goal is if there is anything interesting that you feel is going to help you out, shove it in a list, open source it if you want. I might open source mine as well and put it out there so that whenever you have the time for it, get back to those links. Don't let them slip under the rug. In today's world, it's very easy to get distracted and miss out on some very important information that you know is important is right there. But again, it's a link and it's very easy to miss. So maintain a reading list. That's number one. Number two, be around smart people, find a mentor. You can do one of two things. Either find someone really smart. For me, that was this person in Goldman as well. Frankly, this is one of the few people I looked up to in my life. Find such a person that you can be around. Just look at them code. For that guy, my introduction to Rust, my introduction to Golang, my introduction to Elixir all happened because he was like, oh, you want to learn this? He would open a terminal and start coding and teaching me a few things. These small kicks by someone can probably lead to more motivation, less knowledge. But you know, motivation is what translates to knowledge. If you have a lot of motivation is when you will stick through a bunch of dark times and you know, learn something. So, so if you can find a mentor, look at what they're learning and try to just follow what they're doing. If not, find a smaller crew of people who have like-minded interests and you can be around. But if you had to choose, I think finding a mentor is like 10x more optimal here. Um, that said, it's very hard to get access to mentors. So find a job. And if you find a job, I think there'll be some smart person that just try to get around them. Number three, up solving, picking heavy tasks, stepping out of your comfort zone. Tech is one of those fields where it's very easy to get complacent, easy, be it like the stack that you're currently working in, the company that you're currently working in. Look at any popular website or research that is done. The people who have the most salary increments are people who've sort of moved around from job to job because it's number one, your brain opens up a lot. You learn something new in a new company and it's very easy to be complacent in the old one. Number two, your salary jumps also are much more prevalent when you're moving from one company to another versus in the same company, most of you are getting like an eight to 10% increment. So if you can switch stacks, switch teams, switch companies and make sure you're stepping out of your comfort zone. If you feel like you're at an X salary and your life is going great, that will keep on happening, but you will miss out on exponential returns unless you're moving out of your comfort zones. So if you really want to grow, make sure you're stepping out of your comfort zone. Number four, consistency is key. This will automatically happen if you have a tech job, but if you don't, Tech is one of those fields where the rich keep on getting richer because someone who has a job will be around smart people and learn something new and then, you know, get another job and then so on and so forth versus the other path of people who haven't gotten their first job. They aren't really part of the matrix yet. And here, you know, be it lack of motivation, be it lack of mentorship, be it lack of knowing what you want to learn or should be spending your time on, you'll basically be stuck in that rut. This goes away if you go to a good engineering college. But if you're not in college currently and not working, I think the best thing you can do is find a job as soon as possible, even if it pays less. Being in that ecosystem ends up mattering more than the initial compensation that you're getting. Number five, this one's controversial. So skip this one. Do not follow this one. The answer is being a nerd. Generally, I've seen most smart people I've seen don't have the time to look at what they're wearing, what they're uh, eating, which is not great or you know, hitting the gym. I'm not saying this is something you should do. I'm saying this is a pattern that I have seen that the best traders, the best software developers, unless they're very old, like people beyond an age sort of tend to start to take care of their health, but all the young folks are messing up their health a little too much. You should not, but that's a common trait I've seen in, in software developers that I'm seeing sprint. The one that the guy that is printing is, you know, eating McDonald's for three meals and does not have the time to look at what he's eating because he's spending 12 hours coding. There might be times when you have to do this. Don't make this the norm. I have personally been struggling with this as well, but I have also seen this. Yeah, I'm more productive and I don't have to think of what to wear, what to eat. And if there is someone else to, you know, take care of these things. So either thankfully in India, you know, these things can be taken care of by family. We live in a place where this isn't, you know, looked down upon. But as you move out, if you're not working from India, you'll realize how hard it is to, you know, take care of 
of your health and unfortunately when you are in that growth stage you don't have the time to take care of these things so if that is happening it is a sign that you're in growth stage at the same time make sure you're not doing it for too long of a time because your health is going to catch up very quickly number six being incredibly flexible why are you not able to understand an open source code base when you open it for the first time? The reason is programming is very scattered and nuanced. Every developer has their own way of writing things and does not matter how many standards you create. Every project will be written a certain way. It takes you a month or two of, you know, ramping up to a code base and getting comfortable with it. But if you're looking at an open source project or, you know, you're trying to step out of your comfort zone, you will have to be incredibly flexible, by which I mean, even if you've worked in a certain stack, there is a good chance that the project that you're trying to look at, the company that you're trying to target, their code base looks a different way and you have to adapt to it very quickly. There are times where you feel like, you know, the code is not written the right way. This, this developer has done the wrong thing and I know the right thing. But if it is written a certain way, it is written a certain way. A lot of times it is written the right way only and you know you coming in as a junior engineer or you know someone but make sure you're not getting into the cycle of blame game and trying to blame someone's code base rather you know try to be more flexible and understand why code is written a certain way and adapt to it very quickly will be super helpful if you're joining a new company if you think you want to join if you're in that early stage of not cotton anywhere and being adaptable being able to switch stacks quickly is an underrated skill it helps you a lot in the long term why do you think i keep on opening random code bases and trying to understand them because i just want to make sure i'm up to date with how things are happening and if there is a project out there that's making money, if there is an open source project that's in GSOC right now, it's probably a good project. And irrespective of how I feel the code is written, I should be able to understand it. So be incredibly flexible. Last one, stick through it or leave. Um, this is also mildly controversial, but I feel, you know, if you're trying to do tech in spurts, yeah, I will do it for a week and then leave it. Most probably you'll be back at square one in a few weeks. So chill for a bit. There are a thousand different things to explore. Do that when you are ready. You feel like yeah, chalo, bhai, now I want to give a serious shot to getting into tech or, you know, learn how to code or build my own thing, whatever. I want to get into the, into the top 5%. I don't think you need more than six months to a year to get into the top 5% of coding. Controversial take again. So if you are ready to do it, then step in and then, you know, give it your all. And until then chill there are 100 different things to do anyways when you get into the sprint stage you are going to affect your health a lot so make sure before you get there chill do other things explore other things explore other fields there's a lot of money to make, be made in like non-tech jobs as well so figure all of that out if you're now ready you can have this is a field i want to explore irrespective of the cycles then sprint and go all in for the next six months things are going to be hard and then you'll reach your inflection point things once it's smooth i think once you cross the barrier of you know some xyz lp in india or XYZ dollars per annum. It's a more privileged problem that oh, I'm not making Y anymore. The initial part of when I don't have a job or I'm not able to get into tech or I'm not able to understand the code is the most difficult bit. So if you're in that stage, chill for as long as you want. But when you feel like you're ready to go all in, go all in. Bohat zada depth mein. Give it a shot for six months. Does not happen. Go back to non-tech. Does happen, you know, you will reach that stage of, oh, I make XLPA. Bhaiya, how do I make Y? So, that is a better stage to be in versus this one. All right. That's all for this one, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.